Dealing with a malfunctioning website can be very frustrating, but with the right approach you can diagnose and fix the problem. So in this comprehensive troubleshooting guide, I will provide you with some tips and practical solutions to help you to determine why your WordPress website is not working and guide you through the steps to resolve the issue efficiently. So whether it's a plugin conflict, a team compatibility issue, a server glitch or any other common problem, don't worry, I've got you covered. When you encounter issues with your WordPress website, it's essential to understand the underlying problem before diving into the solutions. The phrase WordPress website not working covers a broad range of potential issues, each requiring a specific approach for troubleshooting. By investigating further, you can narrow down the cause and find an appropriate solution. Common culprits include conflicts between plugins, incompatibilities with themes, server-related problems, or even issues with the WordPress core files. So let's explore these scenarios and equip you with the knowledge to identify the root cause of your website's malfunction. So in this tutorial, I will explain the following topics in more detail to help you to solve the problem for your WordPress website. The first thing that we will cover is check the theme conflicts. Second thing that I will cover is the plugin conflicts. And the last thing is verifying server issues. So first we start off with the theme conflicts and see if the problem is caused by the theme of the WordPress website. And to do this, you first need to go to appearance in the WordPress dashboard over here. And the first option that you will see is the themes and you can click on it. Now you will see an overview of the themes that you have installed for your WordPress website. And you can see that this one is the active theme. In my case, it's the Hello Elementor theme. And basically the other themes that you see over here are backup themes. And as I have often explained in previous tutorials, it's always wise to have a backup theme available. So let's say if I face an issue with my website and it can be all kind of issues like the website is not loading or maybe the text and the images are not displayed correctly or a widget is not functioning properly. First thing you want to do is to see if the issue is caused by the theme of the website. So in my case, the hello theme is uh, active right now. And how can we determine if this theme is causing the issue? Well, it's very easy. First, we need to deactivate this theme and we need to activate another theme. So how we can do that is very easy. You can just go to one of the backup themes. There you will see the activate option. You can click on it and that means that this team becomes active. Then this team won't be the active team anymore. So if this team caused the issue, then of course the issue should be solved. And a tip I want to give you is that after you have activated a backup team, then you need to purge the cache of the website before you check it in an incognito browser. So basically the steps are activate the backup team, purge the cache, and because I have the SiteGround uh, hosting, I have also the SG Optimizer plugin, and that gives you this option, purge SG cache. So if I click on this, then the purge of my website will be cleared. But if you have another hosting, then there are uh, other plugins and other ways you can clear your cache. So make sure that if you activate the backup team, after that, clear the cache of the website, then you need to go to an incognito browser. Stay over here. And then you need to refresh the page. So those are basically the steps that you need to take to see if the team is causing the issue. And one thing I want to mention is that you have to keep in mind that if you activate another team, it might be the case that you have to set up the header and footer inside of the team. So make sure you do that beforehand so that if you have a backup team that you uh, already have the header and the footer set up properly so that when you switch over to the backup team, then the header and footer will be displayed correctly. So you don't have to do that afterwards. So a quick recap is first step is temporarily switch to a backup WordPress team to determine if the issue persists with a the new theme. And if the problem resolves, the previous team may be incompatible or faulty. So those are the steps that you can take to see if the issue is caused by the team. So I hope everything is clear. Now let me show you how you can check if the issue is caused by a plugin conflict. 
And to do that, you first need to go to the plugins overview. And you can do that by clicking on the plugins option in the left menu. And if you click on it, you will see an overview of all the plugins that you have installed on your website. You can see which plugins are activated. You can also see which plugins are installed but not activated yet. So for example, this plugin, the All404 redirect to homepage plugin, I have this one activated. And if I want to, I can deactivate it by clicking on this option. You can see that the plugin below doesn't have deactivate, but it has activate. So that means that the plugin is installed, but it's not activated yet. But for the next step to see if the issue is caused by a plugin, you need to deactivate all of the plugins that you have activated. And once that's done, then I would start off with the most important plugin. And for me, that's the Elementor plugin, because basically that is what I use to build all of uh, my websites. So I would activate the Elementor plugin and in my case also the Elementor Pro version. Then the next step is, and it's very important, don't forget to purge or clear the cache of your website. And then the next step is to go to the incognito browser and then refresh the page of your website to see if Elementor is functioning properly. So let's say if Elementor is functioning properly with all of the other plugins deactivated, then you know for sure that Elementor is not causing the issue. And then we need to search for the plugin that is causing the conflict. I want to mention is that if you are facing responsive issues with Elementor, so for example, let's say if on a mobile device or on a tablet device, Elementor is not displaying uh, the widget properly or everything is outlined to the left or to the right and it can be in the, the header or the footer only or maybe on the regular page. But let's say if you face responsive issues with Elementor, then you need to check out your Zoom settings for your browser. And I have explained everything in more detail in another tutorial. I will link to it in the description of this video. So if you are facing responsive issues with Elementor, make sure to check out that video because that can be very helpful if you are using Elementor. So that was a quick sidestep. Now let's continue with this tutorial. Go back to the plugins overview again. And then you need to activate the second plugin that you need for your website. So in my case, it would be this one, the All404 Redirect to Homepage plugin. Then I would activate it. I would leave the Elementor plugins or the previous plugins that you have tested, you can leave them activated. So once you have tested the plugin and it's not causing the problem, then you can leave that activated and then continue to the next plugin to check if that is causing the issue. So in my case, I would leave the Elementor plugins activated. Then I would activate the All404 Redirect to Homepage plugin. Of course, you need to purge the cache after you have activated any other plugin. So you would have to clear the cache again. And then repeat the same step is go to the incognito browser, uh, refresh the page to see if Elementor and the website is still functioning properly. And if that's the case, then you need to go to the next plugin and so on and so on. And when you find a plugin, that after you have activated it, that it would causing the, the issue for the website, then you know that that is causing the problem. And in that case, you need to check if you have the latest updated version of that plugin uh, installed. If that's not the case, then you need to update it. And if the plugin is still causing the issue, then you can look for an alternative plugin that basically uh, does the same thing. You can activate that one to see if the problem is still occurring or not. So let's say if you find an alternative plugin and you have checked that one and it's not causing the issue, then you can basically switch over to that plugin and uh, make sure that your website is running smoothly. When a new update is uh, available for the plugin that is causing the issue, then in most cases it will be solved with a newer version. So keep that in mind. But I hope the steps are clear. So to summarize it one more time, basically you need to deactivate all of the plugins and reactivate them one by one. You need to clear the cache after reactivating each plugin and also open the browser in an incognito tab and refresh the page of your website to see if the issue occurs after reactivating a plugin to find the cause of the problem. In most cases, the issues are caused by a plugin conflict or a team conflict. So by following the steps that I have just explained, 
you can solve a lot of uh, issues but let's say if you have checked all the plugins you have checked the themes and you still can't find the problem then the next thing you can do is verifying server issues and if you have your website hosted at SiteGround you can find the error log in the site tools panel of your website so over here you can see I have the site tools panel opened up then you need to go to the statistics option over here you can see a few options in the drop down menu and there you can find the error log so you can click on it in my case you can see uh, the domain that is selected over here and in my case I don't have any error logs so that is good but let's say if your website is not functioning properly you can see if you have an error log over here and if that's not the case you can click on refresh to see if maybe it picks something up if that's still not working so if you have checked the plugins you have checked the themes you have checked the error log and you still can't find the problem then you can also contact the support of your hosting provider and see if they can give you any information about the issue and how to solve it. So a quick recap for verifying server issues is you need to go to the site tools panel, you need to check the hosting's statistics error log and see if a problem is mentioned over there. And if that's not the case and you have tried everything else, then you can contact your hosting provider to see if they can help you to find the cause of the problem. So I hope everything is clear. Those are the steps that you can take if you are facing any issues with your website and to prevent similar issues from arising in the future, also adapt these preventive measures. So you need to make sure that your website is regularly updated. So keep your WordPress installation, themes and plugins up to date. Also update immediately when new versions are available to ensure compatibility and security. Make sure you always have backups available. So after you have done some changes to your website or you have uh, adjusted some things, always make sure you have a backup available and let's say if you face a, an issue with your website you can always go back to the backup and in most cases then everything is functioning properly so if you set the backup back again then your website uh, runs smoothly and then you can search for the cause of the issue another thing i have also mentioned in other videos as well is always make sure to have security measures so make sure that your website is protected against brute force attacks and also implement a strong password for the protection of your website. And the last tip is make sure to test things in a staging environment. And in other tutorial as well, I have explained how you can create a staging environment with SiteGround is very easy to do. So basically that's a clone version of your website in a testing environment. And there you can check if everything is running smoothly before you do any changes on the real website. So in this tutorial, I've provided you with some valuable tips and solutions to diagnose and resolve issues when your WordPress website is not working correctly. Let me know in the comments if it helped you out. If it's not working, also let me know. Maybe I can see if I can give you some advice on how to fix the issue. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you appreciate this type of content and also make sure to hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date on new videos that will be uploaded. Thank you for watching and I'll see you back again in the next tutorial.